Today at ShopDap.com, we'll be going over buying a used Mark 7. Okay, so Nathan, who is our videographer who's behind the camera, purchased a used Mark 7. So we're gonna be making a video today of me looking over the car. We're gonna find out anything wrong with it, things to be concerned about, things to look out for when you're buying a used Mark 7. Uh, this is on a sport wagon, but this would be pretty much applicable for any Mark 7 or MQB car that would be a 180 or 2 liter turbo are all going to be the same type of thing since these cars with some variation are different, but for the most part they're the same. Before we inspect the vehicle, let's look at the history of the cars with the Carfax. What you're looking for when you go through a Carfax is just general vehicle history, damage, if it's a total loss, that type of stuff. And if it has been an accident, at least get a gauge for how bad the accident is and the damage associated with it. So no damage, no total loss, no structural damage, no airbag deployment, nothing reported of that. Now that doesn't mean that there hasn't been any, if you have something you don't submit through your insurance and just pay it on the side outright through your pocket, you may not report in stuff like this. So it doesn't mean the car has never been in an accident. It just means that it hasn't been in a significant accident. Again, you will, on inspection, you're gonna to wanna to look for paint and imperfections there. There is a gap where it doesn't show a 10K. Uh, that would have been under warranty a 10K, I believe on this vehicle, it should have had. Obviously the biggest concern would be that it didn't change oil at 10,000 miles. The other, the other likelihood is that it just went to a small shop that didn't report it, and that's why there's no record of the maintenance here. And the vehicle was registered in Farmville, uh, which, if you uh, want to pick strawberries uh, on Facebook, that's a great place to go. You do see another gap there between the 49 and 69. So gaps on this oil changes are in between services. So this car was purchased from a Jeep dealer in a rural area. One, rural areas are usually not great places for import vehicles, really any import, because they generally tend to lean more towards uh, domestic vehicles. But most importantly, when they're looking over a car for a used car inspection and things like that, they are A, not gonna be super familiar with the car to know what to look for, and B, uh, they're probably not going to be super capable. And this car, being from a Jeep dealer in a rural area, when they change the oil, which they sh does show on the history, it's possible that they put the wrong oil in the car. So one of the first things we're gonna do with this car is change the oil to, cor to the correct oil to ensure it's going to be uh, meet the spec required for that car. But a lot of small used car places like that are gonna use the cheapest oil you could possibly imagine. And that's gonna be what they're gonna put in the car because all they care about is getting the car ready for sale in the cheapest way they can oftentimes. So that's where CPO cars and things like that come into play. Uh, which is why buying from someone like an Audi dealer or a VW dealer is going to be, in my opinion, the preferred method for most people. Again, in our situation, Nathan works here. We can we can go over this car, make sure everything's what it needs to be, uh, and fix the car if there are any issues that we find along the way. We are in our car and we have the OBD11 plugged in under the dash. We're just gonna tap scan to have it scan all the control modules and we'll show you what happens when we're done. So the faults in this are data bus error, fuel sensor, fuel pressure regulator, fuel pump, uh, electrical error and circuit, map math correlation faults, intake air system leak. So uh, in this situation, what I would probably do, the data bus error value is probably related to a dead battery. Uh, what I would clear these and see, test drive it, see if anything comes back. There aren't any drivabilities with this car uh, because we have run it and driven it. What we like to do is make sure you save the faults and then you can, when you're before you erase them, so you know what faults were there beforehand and what may come back. And brake system warning, tire pressure, probably had low tire pressure at some point. We can clear that. Central electrics, uh, remote batteries. You probably just need to do new remote batteries. We'll clear them. Multimedia, I'm all sure is satellite tuner fault, and it is. Okay, so nothing majorly alarming there. We did clear it, uh, and I believe that stuff's gonna be all related to the dead battery, but uh, we will find out more. Now we're gonna inspect under the engine, and we'll take a look. The first thing I notice on this is there is a coolant smell from underneath here that I can very clearly and distinctly notice as we open the hood. So. Uh, most likely what it's going to be is the thermostat water pump assembly, which is located right here under the manifold. That's probably the only common problem or known common problem on these engines at this time. 
so I would say it's almost certainly leaking. It's possible it's not, but, and the coolant smell is coming from somewhere else, but we're gonna inspect the whole area to see what else we can find and start by popping this engine cover off. First thing worth mentioning is around the oil cap here, you see this kind of some oil mist or oily residue. Uh, this is pretty common on these engines, 180s, two liters, all of them pretty much, that the oil cap, there's an updated one that this must have some, just not a perfect seal, probably under uh, certain conditions that it'll have a little bit of oil spray. So you also could very likely when you bought a car like this from a, a used dealer like this, they spray the shit out of this stuff with all that like armor all stuff to try to make it look shiny, which frankly is terrible because it just collects dirt and shit under your hood uh, and makes a mess after about 500 miles. It's stupid. Now I am gonna look over the engine and what we are gonna look for is oil leaks here at the cam cage. This isn't super common on these engines, but on a previous TSI it was. Now the water pump is down there, right below this manifold. You can try to look through here to look through these runners to see if you can see anything. Uh, I can't actually see any coolant leaking visibly from here. So we're, we're gonna kind of go from the bottom and see if we can see anything when we go to inspect underneath. Uh, things like ignition coils, these are original. So it's possible these ones have had some revisions. They may need to be replaced if they have any running issues or anything like that. Uh, the fact that it looks like these probably haven't been off before. These grounds look like they probably haven't been messed with because most, as we've sh covered with our flat wrench, these nuts actually don't have a lot of space between them. So we have a special flat wrench to allow you to take them off. The fact that they're pretty much in very good orientation makes me feel like these are actually probably never been removed as well, which means the spark plugs are original on this engine. In addition to that, you can kind of just look generally over the, over the engine at different components, your high pressure fuel pumps here, PCV valves here. We do have a video that shows a complete engine component location uh, on Mark 7s, which we'll link to in the description where you can check that out. But in terms of anything else visibly going on, I don't see anything. There's not a lot of common things. You are gonna be looking around for oil leaks, looking at different seams of where components meet to see if you have any oil. Mostly this car, the only thing I really see is like kind of some dirt and grime. Now we're going to look at the coolant. Now something that you want to make sure of is that when you're inspecting coolant, our engine is a little hot, so we're going to release this slow. You want to make sure that you do have pink coolant in there. Mixing coolant is bad for VW engines. Uh, I have seen a lot of issues related to that if you have extended periods of time that you do that. So uh, pink coolant is what you want, G12, G13, uh, and that's going to be the correct stuff for the car. Uh, you want to inspect it, you can look like this inside to see if it's dirty. Most likely this kind of mileage, it's going to be a little bit dirty, but really what, I'm, what I would be majorly concerned about would be if it looks brownish because it's been mixed with green coolant. Now we're going to check the oil. It does appear to be at the bottom end of the fill mark, but it's got oil in it and it does appear to be pretty clean. So I'm sure they changed it with some really crappy oil when they, when they did it at the GM dealer. Now we're gonna look over the car to see if there's any indication that's been in a collision. So the number one thing you're gonna to wanna to do to inspect that is look at these stickers. Now, anytime this car has been, any car has been an accident, these stickers are gonna be gone and they're not gonna be replaced because these are expensive to replace. And so we know in this area, there was not in a, a collision. So another thing you can look for when you're looking at a car is gonna be the body lines or the, or the gaps between everything. So if we close our hood, if you look down this body line, you'll be able to see if there's any inconsistencies, and the best thing to do is compare one side to the other to actually see if you have any issues. Now let's walk around it just to see if there's any exterior damage that you wanna notice. Now we have it on a lift, it's easier kind of at eye level. Exterior damage is really a matter of what you're okay with accepting. Now you can look for things like paint and things like that may have been painted. Uh, in this case, there's a small ding right here in the fender. And as we move down, there's nothing, everything looks great on the side here. The rocker here does have some damage on it. You can see it's kind of flattened. Now this could be from running something over or this could be from some irresponsible person who didn't properly lift the car up and just kicked an arm underneath of it and kind of stuck a lift arm on top of it. And on this side, everything looks great here. No real damage or scuffs of any kind, nothing of note. Now the last place is there is clear damage here where it's been hit something and then covered up. And if you look, this, either, this car either has a beard or there's been an animal that's hit here. So I can tell this is probably a, some kind of animal. 
This is an aspen. You can tell that it's an aspen tree because of the way it is. Wow. Someone probably ran over a, a deer carcass or something like that. That's probably what I would guess. Or maybe they hit somebody's cat. Meow. This damage obviously looks terrible from underneath, but from the top, you actually can't even see this almost at all. Let's inspect the engine, but first we're gonna just start by dropping this lower engine shield. What you're looking for when you get underneath of an engine is going to be things that are leaking wet of any kind. Now, obviously what type of thing is going to determine what it looks like. So I can tell you when we look at right here, there is a little bit of a leak coming from the drain plug. It does have a mark here on it where they have marked probably from an oil change place that they actually tightened it. Um, and it probably has been reused too many times, which is why it's leaking. Uh, you're supposed to replace it every time. Our oil change kits, we include all the drain plugs with them. So uh, find them at shopdab.com. We are also going to drain the oil because I do want to inspect to make sure that there isn't any uh, trash or anything in the oil uh, to verify the, the health of the engine. Now, when we look here, you can see in the honeycomb of this oil pan is going to be a bunch of dirt. Now, obviously dirt isn't normally going to stick in an oil pan like that. So this is likely going to be because it was wet. Now you can see also on this pipe, you can see a little bit of whiteness around where there was some coolant on there. Usually when coolant leaks, it will dry up and then cause it to be kind of a, a pinkish whitish crustiness uh, on that's like sometimes crystallized on different components. So uh, we're going to be looking straight up here with a flashlight to see if we can show you where that water pump's leaking or identify if it is. So as you can see in this place right here, and we're gonna to point to it with an arrow, you can see that there is some wetness there. Now around there, you'll also see there's other remnants of a leak, but you can see it's actually still wet there. When we look up here, first thing I note is this clamp is actually off. So the fact that we have a water leak here coming from our water pump housing and that this has been off before, this makes me think that this has probably been replaced and the location of our leak is actually between the pump and the thermostat housing, which is not usually where these things leak. So it's possible that when this was swapped out, they did a poor job and that's actually leaking from the seal between the thermostat housing and the pump. And that was from the uh, install or previous install of this correct replacement thermostat. We'll know more once we get in there and we look at the part number of the thermostat housing to see which variation it has. Okay, so I know you're wondering, how long do I have, Doc? I want the plug pulled. Ma'am, your husband's not dying. He's just taking a nap. Uh, and the question is really a good question, but I don't really have a good answer. So usually what you're gonna have in this circumstance is going to be uh, the leak is present. We know it's there. It's going to progressively get worse. And usually a coolant leak like that is going to be fine and probably just a slow leak where you'll have to make sure you keep your coolant topped off to make sure it doesn't get low, but we'll be fine to drive on for a while until eventually we'll probably let loose completely and then you probably won't be able to drive and the car will get stuck on the side of the road. So if you allow it to, get for, to go for an extended period of time, it will probably completely bust and uh, spray coolant everywhere. Not really bad for anything and necessarily, and as long as you don't overheat your engine when it happens, but you could end up stuck on the side of the road where you have to get towed. So uh, that's a risk that you take if you allow it to continue. There are updated kits for these thermostat housings for uh, all the, pretty much all the models that we have that are put together that includes thermostat housing, uh, which is uh, electronically adjustable and then a water pump and all that deal. So uh, we will link to all those in the description below where you can check them out. And we likely will have a DIY coming very soon on this car. Now we're gonna drain the oil just to see what we see. And this is a special tool that's for this. You don't really need a special tool. You can use a screwdriver, but uh, we will link to it so you can take a look. And as you can see, that oil is very new. So they definitely changed that at the dealer when they did a used car inspection on this car. So you're gonna have no way to know whether this is the right oil uh, in the car. Some dealerships are probably gonna be awesome and they're gonna get the right oil in the car and make sure they do everything perfectly. Some of them are not gonna give a sh and they're gonna put the cheapest garbage they can put in here because all they wanna do is put as little money into the car before they sell it. So uh, in this particular case, I presume it's probably gonna be a roll of the dice. And so unless you get them to tell you, uh, give you the invoice of what oil they put in there, uh, you're probably gonna wanna change it after you purchase. And then you can inspect the oil with your fingers. You can see this stuff's pretty clean. 
And once you get it all drained out, you can put your new drain plug back in and we're ready to continue our investigation. Okay, so we're gonna inspect this serpentine belt. It actually looks brand new actually, because if you look here, this, these are the ribs. That's the best place you're gonna see cracking kind of coming across uh, horizontally like this. And there is not any cracking present at all, which at this mileage, I would expect to start to see some of it. So this has certainly been replaced. Now, because we had a fault that led me to believe it, we had a dead battery. I can take a look here and you can see this is not the original battery autocraft. So this has been a new battery, which is probably why it was new is because it died and that's why those faults are there. So uh, no big deal there. Fun fact, battery blankets like this one, if you leave it off and you go into cold weather climates, you are more likely to have a no start condition uh, if it's cold outside or when the temperature drops real far, the more you know. Now we're gonna look at suspension tires and brakes. So you can see these front tires, uh, they look pretty much brand new. Uh, so that's great, uh, other than the fact that they're 15 inch wheels. Now, if you look at these, the inside tread is worn excessively. And overall, the tread wear isn't great. It, they probably have a little bit of life left on them, but the inside edge does have some issues. So either this guy is part of the camber gang or he has an alignment issue uh, and I'm gonna bet that this thing isn't, hasn't stanced out previously. Okay, so we're gonna do an inspection now with our wheel off, and we're gonna do a brake and suspension inspection. So we did on our test drive actually find the front brakes at a vibration. Okay, so a test drive in the car, 71,000 miles, so I don't expect to find too much. The only thing on a car like this that I would probably expect to hear is maybe some like suspension noises and stuff like that. So let's take a look at braking. There is a vibration on braking. I can tell you it's probably the front, but what you can do, and this is, don't try this at home kids. Uh, what you can do is if you feel the vibration when you're braking, you can feel it in the pedal. And oftentimes you'll feel it in the steering wheel too, depending on how bad it is. But you can actually, if you have an emergency brake like this car does, you can actually slowly apply the e-brake with the button up to see if you feel it vibrate then. If you don't, then you know it's the front brakes. So one thing with the car, because this is a manual five speed, we do wanna make sure you get good clutch engagement. Something to keep in mind, uh, as clutches wear, the engagement of that gets higher and higher and higher. So um, as if your clutch is engaging really high, that's how you know you have a worn clutch. And, um, and so something to keep in mind, if you can compare it to another one. Now, you need context for where that specific car engages generally before, for you to know. So that's why it's worthwhile maybe looking at a new version to, to see how it compares if you can or test drive more than one car. We found a couple of speed bumps over here. We're just gonna go over them just to see and what I'm looking for, and it's just not even speed bumps, but just general potholes and bumps in general, is I'm trying to hear if there's any noises, squeaks, that type of stuff. With that type of mileage, it seems way more likely that you're gonna have noises. Now that we've test driven it appropriately, we can inspect the car properly and see what other problems we have. So while these brakes, the pad life is actually pretty decent left. You are gonna wanna make sure you check the inner pad, not the outer pad for the least amount because that one touches first. So it will have the least amount of material. Uh, there is pad life left. I can tell you that these rotors are kind of, you can feel they're, they're kind of scored up and warped a little bit. If you wanna address that issue, you are gonna to wanna to either A, machine the rotors or more likely most European cars. There's not a lot left to machine by the time you get close to worn like that. So. You can turn them, uh, it is a possibility. I always recommend replacing rotors in those circumstances and, uh, and you're gonna wanna do pads as well at the same time. And you're gonna then change your braking experience from one that's poor, that doesn't stop well and has vibration to one that stops great. For longevity, if, if you're keeping a car for long term, you don't wanna just leave it with these type of components on there because you're gonna wanna replace them anyway at some point. If you turn this rotor, it's not, go it's not going to last. It will eventually have uh, this problem again. Now we look at our suspension components. You can see there's a little bit of rust here. There is some stuff here that makes you think that maybe the shocks are leaking, but I can promise you this is a tire shine. They love to goob all over everything. You, the way you're gonna look if a shock is leaking would be up here. So you would see it coming down from up here if there was a shock leaking. Most Volkswagens are pretty rare to have actual shocks leaking. 
Now you're gonna inspect your CV boots, make sure they're good. These both inner and outer are fine in this car. On all sides, tie rods, same deal. You are gonna wanna make sure you check your tie rods for play. You can check these boots to make sure they're not torn. These have a little bit of dry rod in them, but they're not cracked or anything. So we're okay with that. You just wanna keep an eye on stuff like that. If it cracks over time, something to pay attention to. Same thing with ball joints. I'm gonna make sure they have no play, uh, which we'll show you how to do with the wheel on right now. Turn the wheel side to side like this, and you're gonna wanna make sure that the steering wheel is locked, or at least you're not sensing the movement of the steering rack itself. So you're looking to kind of move it like this back and forth. And really what you're looking for is a clunk for play, not movement, because if the steering wheel isn't locked, it's still gonna move some, and that's gonna happen. But you wanna make sure you're not feeling like a click, click, that allows movement. If so, you can inspect your tie rod to see if it's moving when you're doing that. And when you look at this, you also are gonna to wanna to check your wheel bearing, which you can see the bolts are back here, and we can show you how to check that here. Now for wheel bearing, what you're checking for is gonna be kind of fore aft from the top, because side to side you're checking tie rod, fore aft you're gonna be checking wheel bearing play. You'll feel it kind of at any angle, but this is the way you can guarantee you're not feeling any tie rod movements because the wheel doesn't move this way and you're gonna get some play in and out there. You're also gonna to wanna to test drive for wheel bearing noise uh, to hear it actually change, which you can do on a test drive by changing the pitch of things. We have a wheel bearing DIY if you wanna check that out for Mark 7s. You're also gonna make sure you check all your suspension bushings like control arm bushings here and here, and you can just take a pry bar or a screwdriver and you can move the control arm in the bushing just to see if you have excessive play. And in this case, we're fine. We're gonna look at our rear brakes now. Same deal, you're gonna kind of inspect everything. This one does appear to have some wear on the rotor, but not nearly as bad as the fronts. We're also gonna inspect our rear bushings. Now, you're gonna do that same as you did in the front, pry bar on the bushings, wiggle some stuff around, uh, and check all your boots for things like your sway bar end links and check for play. Uh, because this car does not have anything going on there, nothing really interesting there. And interior of this car is actually pretty nice, uh, has cloth seats, and the only thing that is something of, of note is this particular situation here. It seems like somebody broke this. That's our inspection video. If you want to check out, we have a ton of DIYs on Mark 7 stuff. If you're looking for a Mark 7 so you can find out more information there, we will link them in the description. We also have a lot of inspection videos on a variety of cars. So if you're purchasing a car like this, we have a bunch of different models. So we'll link those in the description as well. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.